right? And there's, there's two types of people in this world, right? And if you want to know, it doesn't matter what creed, color, race, gender, sexuality you are, two types of people in this world. You want to know what type of person you are, all you need is a party popper, right? Because there's one type of person in this world, they'll set up a party popper and they'll be like, woo, party time! However, there is another type of person and you know who you are, right? Because you will set off a party popper and your first instinctive thought will be, someone's going to have to clear that up. <laughs> I'm that second top. I hate that. I hate that, right? I, I hate it. Because uh, I, uh, this is James, I, I used to, um, again, James, but I used to present a breakfast show on radio uh, <laughs> before the allegations. Uh, <laughs> Thank God you laughed. Thank God you... I've only ever said that once before and everyone sat there and no one laughed. And there was just a room of 200 people going, he looks like one. Um, <laughs> these are just jokes, right? Uh, but it's only really true that I, I used to present a very show on radio and I got made redundant. And I got directed to a meeting and they said, look, you've been made redundant. There's no payout, no redundancy, whatever. And I called up my, my beautiful partner and uh, my wife was livid. And I called up <laughs> my beautiful partner and I said, look, babe, I, I've just been made redundant. There's no payout. There's no redundancy package. There's absolutely nothing. You know what she said? She said, babe, don't worry. This isn't a crisis. This is an opportunity. <laughs> and I thought, how beautiful. How amazing. How fucking idiotic but <laughs> <laughs> it's not a crisis it's an opportunity I was like, we don't call it the 2008 financial opportunity <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> never seen a middle-aged man driving a harley davidson wearing leather trousers divorcing his wife and thought oh that man's having a midlife opportunity <laughs> right you know, and, and the problem is, if you are too cynical, it ruins things, right? Like, because uh, Una, she she loves Harry Potter, right? Uh, oh, she loves it, and I I hate it. Like, I just I just I can't stand. It's just uh, it's just not believable. That's what I don't like <laughs> about. It's not it's not a believable premise. It's not a, and it's not even the spells. It's not the witchcraft. It's not the wizardry. I just don't find it believable that you expect me to believe. If you give a teenage boy in a boarding school in an invisibility cloak, the first place he's going to go is the library. Are you shitting me? <laughs> like, there is, there is no way that Hagrid passed his CRB. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? The beard. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry. No, off to you. You know, it's like... It's like, it's, like, it's like J.K. Rowling wrote that entire fucking thing uh, without ever meeting a teenager in her life. Because like, how many times in that series of books, movies, and films did the teachers say, get your wand out? And none of the kids say, that's what she says. That's, <laughs> that's an unbelievable premise. 